Hey everyone, Chris Stegall here with Jesus Penaloza from MK Partners and Mambo Merge. Jesus, hey thanks for joining today. Thank you for having me here, Chris. Yeah, we are recovering. Uh, it is one week post Dreamforce, and my feet are finally feeling normal again. Um, but we <laughs> figured we would uh, join up today to chat, uh, do a little Dreamforce recap um, for those of you that weren't able to make it or folks that were, but didn't get a chance to see everything because it's so big that you couldn't possibly see it all, uh, even if there was three of you, right? Definitely um, agree on that. <laughs> yeah, and Jesus, this was your first time at Dreamforce, I think first time in San Francisco, right? Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, first cool. time Dreamforce, first time in San Francisco. Yeah, and for me, this was my first time back to a, the, I don't want to say a real Dreamforce, uh, but back to a you know full-powered Dreamforce in a while because we had the virtual one in 2020 when COVID had just come out. And then last year we had that super small 5,000 person outdoor dream force. Um, so this was the first time I was really able to get all over Moscone Center. Um, and it honestly felt like 100,000 people, even if it was only 40,000 this year. So I oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. There were a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, it's just so busy. Um, so, Jesus, I think you made a, a cool little collage here. I'll pull it up of Dreamforce. Um, but let's kick off. What was the uh, what was your your best experience from the the three days there in San Francisco, or your favorite thing at Dreamforce this year? Oh, definitely a first time uh, attendee uh, to Dreamforce or attending events in general. Um, I guess my biggest. Uh, uh, takeaway on this and or surprise that I had was just the amount of people that were there. It had been such a long time that I had been to an event that the magnitude of people just going from one place to another to another, it was just very uh, motivational, inspiring to kind of see everybody uh, get together for the for a similar purpose and cause. And let alone uh, a lot of people there were more than willing to share information and relate with uh, similar uh, either issues or uh, questions that they had and people just started kind of engaging. So that was actually really surprising because usually with events, people, everybody kind of sticks to themselves, but there was a lot of engagement going on with individuals that may or may have not known each other. Yeah, I think that's always the biggest surprise for me too, even though I should expect it by now. Uh, it still surprises me just how welcoming and helpful the Salesforce mm -hmm. community is. Um, Usually, like you said, usually you go to a, a business conference or, you know, an event, whether it's like a big thing like Comic-Con or some big industry event in Las Vegas or any, anything. Um, and I feel like a lot of those conversations are very centered around people trying to get to their objective. Like if you go to a happy hour sponsored by a company you expect them to give you the sales pitch and try to convince you to like buy their stuff. Um, and at Dreamforce, obviously there are sponsors, there are people hosting events that would like to get you as a customer, but I almost never get the sense that I'm being sold to. It's much more of a conversational, like how can we help? And, oh, here's something I'm running into. And they're quick to offer a solution. They're not going straight to like, you should hire us, you know? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you definitely nailed that, uh, uh, the nail on the coffin there because that, that was a big shock for me. Just people willing to listen to each other and uh, open to discussion. And like I mentioned, there was a lot of offsite activities going on during Dreamforce and a lot of people were just connecting with each other and, realizing that there was a lot of people with similar issues that were able to help each other. So there was a lot of conversation I heard, and let alone that because being an international event, there was a lot of conversations going on in different languages. So it's like, hey, I kind of recognize that language, but obviously I don't know what they're saying, but I do recognize that they're talking. And just their uh, body language already tells you that, you know, there's interaction, there's engagement, people are, you know, coming together. So that, that was really, really cool to see. Yeah, and as somebody that doesn't, I don't want to say doesn't like to, but as someone who's not the most comfortable starting conversations with strangers, um, it's definitely easier at Dreamforce because you know everybody's there for the same reason. Even when you're outside the campus, mm -hmm. just walking through San Francisco, you see so many trailblazer hoodies and Dreamforce lanyards and everything else that 
you know, if you're in an elevator with anybody else, you can always be like, so you're at Dreamforce? And there's a 90% chance they're going <laughs> to say yes. And then you get to be like, well, where are you coming from? And, and it's like a super easy way to make friends and connections really quickly. And then you end up finding similarities uh, uh, along with some of the people. I ended up uh, connecting with some people there that actually came from where I was born from. And I was That's like, awesome. oh, okay. So obviously that helps kind of jumpstart the conversation and kick off, you know, uh, what do you call, uh, more and more engagement. But yeah, like I say, you can kind of spot people <laughs> from left to right because you can kind of just see people swarming from one place to the other in the masses. And I thought that was really cool. So like, I've, it's been a long time since I've seen that. Yeah. And if you aren't familiar with the geography of San Francisco or you've only ever looked at like the Dreamforce map, I think folks might be surprised just how much it spreads out. Um, Cause I don't think, I don't think I paid for a lunch, dinner, drink, soda, coffee for the three days that I was there. Because even when you leave Dreamforce, it feels like every restaurant and cafe is sponsored by somebody and they all just want you to come in and like, grab a soda, grab a water, take a pastry, get whatever you need, you know? Oh yeah, definitely. You walk left and right, like you said, and people were just offering stuff. There was, uh, what do you call snacks or actual full meals that you could uh, sit down based on, obviously everybody had kind of like different schedules, but like I said, you, you, you didn't have to have any type of currency or spend. Everything, you know, was brought together by the Salesforce, uh, uh, ecosystem and then the communities themselves and the sponsors and then partners that wanted to work. It was just a big uh, way to kind of help that whole city. I believe there was a, a lot of uh, appraisal for having this event kind of come back and help boost up the, uh, the economy actually itself uh, around yeah. that San Francisco area. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I'll try to throw a map up here that I can show everyone sort of how big it gets. Um, so you're not just looking at our faces for this video. Um, yeah, so what was your uh, what was your favorite part? Oh, favorite part actually ended up being the, uh, what do you call it? Some of the keynote speakers and some of the activities that were going on. I was amazed at how many uh, guys they had all throughout the uh, all the uh, facilities kind of helping people directing them because you had to know where to go to kind of engage with some of the activities they had. There was prices that were giving away, really cool stuff, like this Trailblazer hoodie I'm wearing right now, uh, what do you call Cody, uh, a couple of plushies. Um, and yeah, uh, let, me, uh, there was... let me make it widescreen there. You <laughs> oh, can there see you the go. Cody's over <laughs> your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I got Cody over here. My two Cody's in that side over there. So, you know, now I have two. So now he's no, no longer by himself. But uh, it, it's really nice to kind of see a lot of people uh, go after all these different, uh, the swag. And believe it or not, it's actually really good material. So I was surprised, you know, you would think that swag is like, you know, it's just the least cost and most effective to kind of just get people to entice. But the, the company goes out of its way to kind of produce something that people actually want to keep and use for the long term. So being able to engage with activities, uh, the amount of facilities and the amount of uh, events going on uh, within the uh, all the facilities was just out of this world. It was just like, wow, you just turn left and then you saw a whole new thing. I ended up not realizing that there was multiple levels within some of the Moscow buildings that I just ended up going to the first one. And then the next day I realized, hey, wait a second, there's actually another <laughs> two levels. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> I got to keep going. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Moscone West had three floors because it had the one, like, the first floor looked like it's just registration, but then it's like, oh, there's closed doors there, and you walk through them, and it's a whole Dreamforce, giant trees, dark, starry skies, yep. speaking stages, demo booths, all that kind of stuff. And then it was like, oh, and there's two more floors of that. And then there's two more buildings of that. It's just, like, so massive. Yeah, so I, I guess one of the things that I also appreciated was the fact that there was a lot of hands-on learning at all these boots. So you can actually walk through demos and kind of get training and actually get the hands-on experience and have people actually spend 10 to 15 minutes walking you through a set of process for you to understand something. doesn't matter what service or product the Salesforce had to offer. Uh, there was always somebody there to help you, and they were more than willing to do it. Obviously, you know, it's all part of the experience you get, you know, while you're attending Dreamforce. But that goes beyond some of the other conventions that people are not. They're looking to capture capture information or gather information 
just to kind of see if they can sell you or uh, give you a pitch. Uh, this yeah. was completely the opposite. It was more about teaching people how to learn and uh, educating them more about what Salesforce products and services uh, is all about, which is yeah. something I took away big time. Like, okay, now there's a lot more stuff I have to learn. So this is more like a jump start for me to kind of be like, hey, you know what? There's more out there. Yeah. And like with any, I feel like every Dreamforce sort of has its own big announcement, whether it's the acquisition of Slack or in this case, the rollout of Salesforce Genie. Um, there's always sort of a big reveal or cornerstone in the keynote. Um, and so it's super valuable to have those little demo stations and people that are educated on the product to be able to like explain it further. Because I think a lot of us left the keynote sort of going, okay, uh, Genie sounds really cool. What is it? And, and then it was great it to work? be able, yeah. <laughs> so then it's great to be able to go up to like the second floor of Moscone West where they have the big genie area and yep. just grab one of those people standing in front of the demo things and be like, okay, so I heard about it. I still don't quite understand what it is. And they're like, oh, let me walk you through it. Let me show you a use case where it might be valuable to you and like really help you as opposed to a lot of conferences where I think they do sort of a big product announcement, but then that's it. And it's like, go learn more on our website or whatever. It's great to have like a conversational, uh, you know, update to that knowledge. Oh yeah. There's a lot of that in, in this event. And that was one of the most rewarding part. They actually have to have that face-to-face -face engagement with people and actually get the uh, conversation it kind of takes you back. So obviously yeah. it's a tech-based uh, uh, platform, but still, they still nurture that part of, you know, uh, uh, pr productivity. Yeah. And we have been back because um, we've been going to some of the community events like Northeast Dreamin, Tahoe Dreamin, um, et cetera. So we had sort of like seen Trailblazers face to face again this year. But I think a lot of people save their travel budget, save their, you know, event spend for Dreamforce. So for a lot of people, it was the first time seeing coworkers and uh, not strangers, but, you know, other community group members that you might have only ever seen on Zoom calls. So it was really cool to see that happening, too. Yeah, it's nice to be able to be uh, to, to see some of that. Hey, remember, we met at uh, this convention. Like I said, we went to several of them earlier this year, and it was a nice buildup. Uh, everybody kind of gave me the heads up that, you know, you have to go to Dreamforce if this is something you're looking forward to uh, pursuing as a career. And I was like, okay. And opportunity uh, presented itself, and you know, I went through it, went to the experience, and I have to say that they're, they're they're right. You know, you definitely have to uh, allocate uh, what do you call some time to attend Dreamforce. And I even heard of people, you know, depending how budgets are in companies, a lot of companies sponsor their employees and some of the attendees to go, but some of the people actually do it out of their own pocket. And I met a couple of them, and you know, they were more than uh, uh, willing to do it just because of the investment. It's an investment. Yeah. And it's a, actually a well damn good one because, yeah. you know, there's a lot of return uh, on uh, on this. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little bit disappointed that you didn't say your favorite part of Dreamforce was the session that Matt and I did on Tableau oh. tips and tricks. <laughs> um, but I think there was also another uh, milestone for you at Dreamforce. You got your first certification. That is correct. Yes. <laughs> and I did like that session a lot. So we do have a recording <laughs> and we'll put that up hopefully uh, soon enough. But yes, yeah, that was one of actually just because um, on that on that uh, note, I uh, just want to touch base real quick. One of the things I guess that I didn't realize and actually want to do is uh, the session speakers as, as yourself and Matt were able to, uh, you know, generate a campfire session and be able to present. Uh, there's a lot of prestige and value on that. There's a lot of uh, effort and commitment. And you know work put into that so all these session speakers everybody that did that you know uh, i try to play close close attention because i would like to be able to do that at one point be able to present and kind of show that so i did appreciate the fact that i was able to learn and realize okay this is this is the body language you gotta have this is the communication you gotta uh, work through uh, and you don't have to you don't have to worry about knowing everything i guess that's a big takeaway i took because one of the biggest concerns was I don't know much, but I realized that people around me are pretty much the same way. And that's okay. You're going to learn more and you're going to, you know, uh, not know something, but then you will figure it out or you will work with other people to figure it out. So that was really cool. Yeah. Um, it's definitely, I always get super nervous before it's actually supposed to happen. And then once it's over, 
you're relieved and excited and glad you did it. Um, and if you do like the 40 minute theater sessions, definitely take more of a speakery presence and, you know, thorough structuring of your presentation because that's a lot of time. But those 20 minute sessions go by in like the snap of a finger. It feels like you got to keep your introduction short so you can get right to the meat of what your talk is about. But you want to make sure you leave enough time for questions because that's always sort of the most engaging part of any session is the Q&A with the audience and that conversational learning from each other component. Yeah, it's like an icebreaker too. You know, you got to people, you, you want to say the right things to make sure people are willing to speak up because some people are not willing to. And, and you guys did that really well because the, the questions started rolling one after the other. You guys yeah. ended up spending quite a bit of time answering questions. So that was really cool. Yeah. And I think that is um, like the point you made about being worried that you don't know everything, I think is one of the, the good things about Dreamforce is that everybody kind of goes in with their own, like everybody knows the things that they know, but people also know that there are gaps that they want to fill. And it's a great chance to like, if you have some questions prepped ahead of time and go like, hey, I'm going to Dreamforce. I want to learn how to do this. I want to learn why this thing is the way it is. And I want to learn why when I try to do this, it actually does this. Because those are, I feel like, more exciting conversations to have than the standard. So where are you from? So what do you do? I like to, like, as soon as you find out somebody's, oh, yeah, I administrate Slack for my org. Then you get to be like, oh, great. I had this question about Slack. So when we're <laughs> connecting Slack to an opportunity and I want to feed that. And, and they're like, oh, yeah, I've done that. Like, here's how I approached it. Or here's the stumbling blocks that I ran into so you can avoid them. It feels like very collaborative nobody's like trying to keep it a secret and be like, yeah well, exactly i'll tell you <laughs> yep definitely it's very welcoming it's willing people want to hear use case scenarios they want to hear issues and problems so they can provide you know uh, uh solutions that they have created or or thought process so yeah, yeah that's definitely a really good takeaway on this yeah um and what was the uh what was the certification you got oh yeah so going back to that now <laughs> yes i love this hat <laughs> and that was a great experience. And I guess it's the first time that Salesforce did this because apparently from what I heard, they had never done this before. And they allowed attendees to take certifications uh, free of charge for any type of exam that you want to take a test for. So uh, what do you call when I found about this, I was like, OK, you know, I've been wanting to do the, the part of certification. And um, I did do that earlier this year, but, you know, I didn't pass. And I tried it again at Dreamforce. but I didn't pass, which is okay. You know, I will continue, but at least I kind of, I realized that, you know, I, I wasn't as prepared, but I just wanted to do it just to get that practice in. Yeah. So then that was related to the associate. So I guess there's a new a new set of certificates that came out, and one of them is the associate. It's pretty much the entry level uh, introduction to understanding the customer um, 360 platform, along with the uh, service and products, uh, the products and services that Salesforce has to offer. Uh, pretty much recommended for people that have been uh, in the Salesforce ecosystem between uh, zero to six months, right? So with that takeaway, uh, I went ahead and uh, took it. You know, I'm like, okay, let's do it. And sure enough, you know, from the um, Salesforce ecosystem to the, uh, what do you call, um, uh, reports, uh, dashboards, over to, um, what's it called, uh, data, Data, ma uh, data plotting or data maps. And then the last one was uh, navigation. Uh, between those four different subjects, they answered a whole bunch of questions. And uh, come to know, you know, a lot of stuff I had been doing, I just didn't realize those different uh, topics and uh, uh, what exactly was going on. So when I took the test, you know, the, the several questions kind of, you know, just were either straight out from Salesforce directly or a product or service they offer. And it's just pretty much, you know, in this uh, situation or use case, what product or service you would offer to make some of the basic changes within the Salesforce uh, platform, where would you go? So it kind of gave you some options to do that. And it was just straightforward. And obviously the biggest one was the community. So the ecosystem. So knowing how to engage with other trailblazers and uh, where would you go to get help? Where would you go to get training? Uh, how would you find more information? So sure and behold, I went ahead and took uh, the test. And after I finished, it took about a little bit of an hour. Um, I passed and I was so happy. 
because I didn't realize yeah. how much more information I had retained and I knew about. It's just kind of putting it together. So I gave us a sense of understanding because obviously as coming into the Salesforce ecosystem, you, you learn so much stuff, but then you want to figure out how to put things together. And I feel this exam at least gives you that starting point because you can kind of start in different areas, but if you just want to uh, get the basic understanding of Salesforce, this is a good exam to have, at least under your belt. Some people will probably just skim through and pass it really quick, but at least it's still, it's, it's a nice fundamental and uh, fundamentals to have uh, going into this as a new career. Yeah, and congratulations again on passing. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think it's uh, it's sort of a new area for the certifications in that like it really does test your familiarity as like a user and your understanding of the broader concepts of Salesforce as a whole. And I think it's probably going to, you know, because I think there's millions of people that use Salesforce that have never even considered taking a certification exam because it was like, why would I need to get certified on field service lightning unless I'm going to be a consultant or unless I'm going to be applying for a job that is like field service lightning admin for a company that does use specifically that portion. And this is like a great, like let's broaden the audience for certifications and also sort of give something, give people something that they can put on their resume. So as they go to a job where they use Salesforce, but aren't necessarily going to be doing all of the back end stuff to prove that they have the knowledge base and understanding to jump right in and, and communicate and get to work and not have to like learn Salesforce on day one and then learn the job on day 10. No, definitely agree. And that was one of the uh, wake up calls for my end because trying to put the pieces together um, is one of the things I guess, I'm pretty sure every trailblazer at some point has to go through it, especially during their initial trial and figure out which ways uh, best practices uh, to apply for you to understand, you know, how all this works. So this kind of helped me put all the pieces together and like realize, hey, I, I know what this is. So this is the term used. This is the way you need to communicate when it comes to relating this information. So ex I guess the basic saying says, I mean, goes uh, something like uh, when you learn some but something, if you can teach it to somebody else, that's when you really learned it. So I guess that's, that's what I took away uh, from this exam. What I've been taught, I've been able to, you know, uh, bring forth so now i can go out and at least e educate to some extent of what i've learned yeah awesome and then uh, i guess last question is do you have any recommendations for people that are planning on attending next year oh definitely uh there's I, I can go down the list of so many <laughs> but i'll try to keep it simple i'll try to do three things i would say first and foremost uh be energetic be open-minded positive uh, engage with people don't uh, feel shy or um, what do you call concerned or worried that you're going to get, you know, somebody that's not going to uh, want to communicate or engage or somebody might say something you feel a little uncomfortable. Uh, the community, individuals, everybody I met is pretty, uh, what do you call, open and pretty willing to uh, at least get to know you, greet you, uh, meet you. And then if there's interest, you can kind of go from there at that point. But there's going to be interest because you're there for the same reason. You're there to learn Salesforce products and services, as you mentioned. The sessions, when you go to similar sessions, there's similar interests in mind. So that's the first one. Second one, get some comfortable shoes. You're going to be walking all day and probably all night. If you decide to go to some of those offsite activities, which there's a lot, and I do recommend them because there's a lot of active, uh, networking that happens there. And people, and you get to meet even more people that you probably won't see because um, – you're not going to get to every single location, uh, especially the first year or even any year. There's just too much to cover at once. All the sessions are going at the same time. You have to pick and choose what you want to do. Um, and third, uh, be willing to explore. Don't set up an agenda. I tried to set up an agenda. It, it didn't work out well for me uh, because uh, some of the session numbers changed. Uh, everything was kind of, I guess it was a new, the first year coming back since the pandemic uh, in full force. So I guess, you know, not everything was 100%, but, you know, that's with all things, you know, it's going to be 99.9%. Okay. But don't build an agenda. I would say just kind of explore. That's ended up what I did. I just explored and realized, oh, so this is where this is happening and this is where this is happening. So I would just kind of stop and go and kind of uh, check out different areas. And that's how I found out the second and third floors <laughs> of the Moscone West uh, building because I didn't know about them. <laughs> but yeah, just explore. And obviously, you know, the whole thing is trails, right? You're a trailblazer. You want to explore. So I would recommend my third point would be explore. Don't be worried about trying to be like, oh, I got to do all these things. No, just 
go with what whatever happens that day with your comfortable shoes and the fact that you will talk to people, you're going to be set and you're going to have so many experiences. You're going to share them for many, many years to come, which I have and I, I will continue to do that. So awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you uh, you were going through your list and I was like, OK, well, I can change my list because I had comfortable <laughs> shoes as number one. I think that's always everybody's biggest piece of advice, I think. Over three days, I walked like 30 miles. I think we were all checking our uh, our fitness apps to be like, oh, how yeah. many steps did we get? How many floors have I climbed today? Comfortable. You are the winner on that one. So one. congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm sure there's people that walked 60 miles while we were there. You know, it's just for like for being as hilly as it is, it, like the where in San Francisco it is is very walkable. It feels very yes. flat, and and you're always talking, so you're like. By the time the conversation ends, you're a mile away and you're like, oh, wow, that was easy. <laughs> you're um, walking and talking. <laughs> yeah. And I think um, my second uh, recommendation kind of falls in line with yours. Um, mine isn't to don't make an agenda, but it's to make like plan, but don't commit. So I, I say, take a look at the agenda builder, which always comes out a couple of weeks before Dreamforce and we'll have all the sessions and like tag the ones that you're interested in, but don't go with the expectation that you're going to arrive at 8 a.m. and go to this session. And then you're going to leave that session when it ends at 8.20 and get to this session that starts at 8.30 because it might be half a campus away and you'll never mm -hmm. make it in time. And on the walk to that session, you'll probably pass three others that might look more interesting. And you don't want to miss something that's going to be relevant and educational just because you've already mentally committed to something else. So I think like, do look at the agenda and come up with a rough plan, but just know that it's a suggestion as opposed to an itinerary. You're not gonna go to everything you plan to, your favorite thing might be something that you didn't even know was gonna be there. Um, so you definitely wanna keep your like eyes and ears open for sessions that look interesting and checking Twitter because Dreamforce is posting stuff about sessions that are coming up or, contests that are going on and stuff like that and so it really does help you feel engaged um, and then my last uh, recommendation uh, would be to bring some questions that you'd like to get answered so whether it's a project that you're working on or something for a client or just something you've always been curious about having some of those like pre-packaged questions really helps you make connections because uh, people like to help and so when you are willing and ready to ask for help, you'll get to go back to the office the next Monday and say like, oh yeah, boss, I learned a lot. I had these three questions. I got all three of them addressed. Um, other people in your office are probably gonna be curious about what you learned. So it's always nice to have a little you know, structure there to say like, I went in trying to learn these things. Here's what I learned. Here's what I think we should implement. Um, and that was three recommendations, but I guess just to sneak one more in, I would say um, I would encourage everybody to try to to speak. Um, this, the call for speakers always goes out a month or two before Dreamforce. And I think it's worth it for everybody to submit speaking topics, even if you've never you know, publicly spoken at an event before, you're going to it's you have a hard time finding a more welcoming and understanding audience. Um, they're sort of people with all levels of comfort and skills and Salesforce wouldn't put you in a situation that you couldn't handle. They're not going to take a beginner and put you in front of an audience of experts just to watch you struggle. And if you say like on the, uh, when you submit the speaking session, it says like, how many people are you comfortable speaking in front of? And you can pick, you know, 10 to 20 or 300 to 500, but they're not going to take somebody who's like, I'm only comfortable in groups and throw you on the main stage. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, but the experience you get of trying to take knowledge out of your brain and share it with an audience, I think is great. And then also the feedback the audience gives you and the things that come out of their brain are so valuable. And you get a free ticket to Dreamforce when you're selected as a speaker. So I encourage everybody to do it uh, just to make that conversation easier too. It's a lot easier to go to your boss and say, hey, um, I'd love to go to Dreamforce. Do we have the budget for it? By the way, my ticket is paid for because I'm speaking. 
Uh, they're going to have my name and face and the company name. So it's kind of like a little, you know, you can go to your boss and say, hey, this is good for our brand. We should really send me and maybe some other people. <laughs> so I do encourage that. Um, Definitely. Touche on that. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's what I had for today. I'll put your uh, collage back up here. And thank you, Jesus, for joining me today and in San Francisco last week for Dreamforce. Of um, course. It was a pleasure. Yeah. And we'll thank have you for having more. Me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll have some more Dreamforce content headed uh, this way soon. Um, we're going to get the video of the session cut, and we'll get that posted as well. Um, and I'm sure that there will be things that Jesus and I think of after this, and we go, oh, we really should have mentioned that. So we'll probably do a round two of this at some point. Uh, maybe get Matt on the phone, too, to share his perspective, since he's been to who knows how many Dreamforces. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you lost track of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cool. Well, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, again, uh, Chris Stegall, MK Partners and Mambo Merge. Jesus Penaloza, MK Partners and Mambo Merge. Um, and I will go ahead. I think you did a, a blog recap of your time at Dreamforce as well, so I'll be sure to throw that in the video description. Uh, yes, do... please take a look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really well done. Got lots of pictures. Um, and do please uh, like and subscribe to the channel here. Uh, to stay up to date on the latest Salesforce news, features, uh, new releases. We have a, uh, a new release coming up, right? Uh, spring 23 is oh, the next yeah. release, unless it's winter 20. It might be winter 23. I can just winter tell 23. What... Maybe winter yeah, 23, winter but still, you're right. It's literally right around the corner. Yeah. It's just hard to remember that it's winter because I'm sitting here sweating in the window. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Um, hope you subscribe and we'll be back here shortly with more updates and news. Have a great day. All right. Bye. Bye.